Good morning. Let's all stand this morning. We'll sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom comes, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Or be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside your garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the souls and clean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Real loud now. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You may be seated. Amen. How many of you notice that it looks a little bit different up here this morning? Anybody notice that? Yeah, there's not a pulpit, we got a table. We're going to have a great time this morning. Brother Bill Katz is with us from Hope for Israel. And uh, we're going to have an overview of Christ in the Passover. And he will lead as the Lord uh, directs him. Um, We're having the Lord's Supper service as part of this. So let me just explain that what we do at Calvary is close communion. You don't have to be a member of Calvary Baptist Church. But you do need to know Jesus as your Savior and you need to be prepared for bat- for um, the Lord's Supper. Uh, the Bible says, let a man examine himself and then let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. We will have an invitation time prior to the Lord's Supper, but you may be wanting to think about that. Again, you don't have to be a member of Calvary. You just have to know Jesus as your Savior and understand what this is all about, and then you can partake thereof. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for Brother Bill and for his mission, for uh, his excitement about Israel and hope for Israel. I pray, Father, that you be with us this morning. Help us to pay attention. Help us to have the understanding by the Holy Spirit of what is going on and how this impacts our view of Passover and the Lord's Supper. Father, be with us now as we continue this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Denise is not here, so I get to do her announcements. And uh, there are a number of announcements, new information from our governor. Um, He has opened Texas. Uh, It is still one of those situations where each entity or business can decide for themselves whether you wear masks or not. As you probably noticed this morning as you came in, this whole side over here is wide open for anybody who wants to sit anywhere they want and wear a mask or not. This section over here is still social distanced. It's every other pew. And then that section over there is only for people with the name of Holloway. Well, maybe, maybe not. 
that whole section is social distance and this one is wide open. We'll continue to do that until we see how this thing uh, develops. Um, tell your friends that we're on Facebook. You might want to contact them, let them know. We are on Facebook Live this morning and you can like and follow. If you're watching from home, please comment. If you're signed in, you can comment in Facebook. Otherwise, use uh, comments at calvarybrenham.org. You can send me an email. I do get those. If it is something you would like shared with the church, by all means, let me know that in the email. So thank you for everybody who is here and those who are watching from home. Pastor and men, Tuesdays at 10. It is open to anybody who wants to come and fellowship with us, if you're a man. Um, Jeremiah is a book study that the ladies are doing on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. Uh, some of you have already signed up and your books are in the back table there. If you haven't picked them up already, or see Carol. All righty. And the Wednesday nights, we're starting at 5.45. We used to start at 5.30, and then once we started back from COVID, we started at 6. But this way, those of you who are getting home from work, we're going to, at 5.45, we'll begin our sandwiches and fellowship, and that will go until 6.15. And from 6.15 to 6.45, we will live stream and we'll wrap things up for the last 15 minutes. So if you get here at 5.45, fine. If you get here any time between then. And the ladies tell me that they're about to get to where we're going to actually do a meal instead of just the snacky stuff. So that is coming up soon. And then the Easter schedule at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning. Uh, the men cook breakfast. We don't have adult Sunday. In fact, we don't have Sunday school. The men cook breakfast at 10 a.m., and we fellowship with that. And then we have resurrection egg hunt, not Easter egg hunt. Uh, practice using the word resurrection Sunday because Easter has become so commercialized. And when you say resurrection, people are going to know what you're talking about. And then 1045 is our regular worship service for Easter Sunday morning, resurrection Sunday. We are still receiving the Annie Armstrong gift. This is for North American missions. And uh, any other thing, you can see late breaking news at calvarybrenham.org for the latest news and updates. Children, come on ahead. <clears throat> and Brother Bill Katz is going to join us. And children, if you'll sit right here. <laughs> this is new for me, so. Kind of fly patience. around the room. Oh. What is the status on this, Carol? Okay, I will hand this to you. All right, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Brother Bill, All right. the floor is yours. By the way, this is something that is always done in the synagogue, so this is not a new thing. Don't you just eat? Has it ever happened to you that you want to go out somewhere and you can't? Yes. And why is it that you can't go out? What are some reasons? Why? Tell me. Because of the coronavirus, yes. Because? It's raining. It's raining, right. Because? Yeah, you didn't clean up your room. And no gas. no gas, right. See, I belong to a group of people called the Jewish people. And we had a similar situation. We were in a place that was awful. We were a place where we couldn't go out. We couldn't do what we wanted to do. We... We were prisoners, not like you, not like you. No, oh, you're not prisoner, okay? And don't you ever tell your mother that you're a prisoner. But we were prisoners. There was a very evil man called the Pharaoh. The, wow, who, whose mother? <laughs> I'm impressed. That's right. Whose mother? Brother Bill, sometimes I'm, they just take I'm over. <laughs> That's right. But this is the thing. 
we couldn't do anything about it because we were prisoners. And Pharaoh was very powerful. But God, so you know what we did? We cried out to God. And we said, God, we need some help because we can't do this by ourselves. And God sent a liberator. Can you say that word? Liberator. Right, like that. Liberator. And that liberator was Moses. And he went to Pharaoh. Com that were written in history. Let my people, my people go. go. And you know what? Pharaoh <laughs> said, uh -uh, I don't want you to go. That's right, because God was more powerful than Pharaoh. And God is more powerful than anybody. So remember that just like God sent Moses to liberate the Jewish people, my people, God sent Jesus to liberate you from something bigger, from sin. Because sin doesn't let you please God. So remember that Jesus came to give you freedom. Freedom from sadness, freedom from worry, and freedom from sin. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for, thank you because you love us. And, and thank you because you worry about us. And just like you worry about the Jewish people, and you saw that they couldn't go out of Egypt to their land, you worry about us. And you think about us. And you care for us. And that is why you sent Jesus to die for us. So we can talk to him, we can pray for him, and we know that he listens to us. And because he liberates us, from sin and from fear. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, as Brother Bill is going to show us today about the Passover, it all points to Jesus. This morning, I would ask you to stand, if you would. We're going to sing hymn 139. It's all about the cross. At the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? He did look that sacred head for such a worm as I. At the cross, at the and the burden of the way. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done? He up on the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glory in when Christ the mighty maker died for men the Cross at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Thus might I hide my blushing face while Calvary's cross. Where 
here this morning don't see anybody new see some folks I hadn't seen in a while so we're glad you're here too and those watching from home either now or in the future we're so glad to have you with us also uh, our tithes and offerings we have offering plates in the aisles we're not passing the plate per se but there are opportunities there there are a number of ways to give we still have the box outside of Denise's office you can put something in don't even have to come into the church you can mail a check uh, there is giving on our website, calvarybrenham.org. And something brand new this morning, there's a screenshot of our website. And if you look at the top right there, it says giving. And when you open that page, there's a button there that will say uh, Calvary Brenham. You can give to Calvary through uh, online giving. And then I've added a button that you can give to Hope for Israel. Now we have envelopes here we've got cards here bill will talk to you about that we want to help out his ministry as much as we can so we have some hope for israel maybe you didn't know we were going to take an offering for that you want to give later just take an envelope home you can put whatever in it and put it in the uh, box there but we want to be able to bless bill and uh, hope for israel as they are here so let's go to the lord in prayer and brother doug would you ask the blessing on our offering please our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in our worship service that we can come and we can give what you have given to us. We can give just a little bit back and we do it out of hearts of uh, cheerfulness and we pray that you use these funds to build your kingdom here in Calvary, Brenham and beyond. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And in just a minute, Brother... Bill is going to come and give us the overview of Christ and the Passover. But before we do that, as we said, uh, this is the Lord's Supper service also at Calvary. We'll be part of this. And the Bible tells us in that passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, there's that warning there, but let a man examine himself. This is not me examining you or you examining your neighbor. This is everybody look at your own heart. And I would encourage you just pray, Holy Spirit, illumine my heart if there's anything in there that needs to be changed before I partake of the Lord's Supper. You can do that. We're going to have our invitation hymn. We normally have an invitation prior to a Lord's Supper, and we will do that. I will be down here at the front. If you need to come and see me, you can certainly do that, or you can kneel here, or you can pray as you stand uh, in your pew. But let's uh, stand and sing our hymn in Christ alone.
seated. Brother Bill, come on ahead. I'm glad to have this guy as a friend. And I told him that uh, I was designated him pastor of the morning. And he has designated me assistant pastor. So, um, Bill, without further ado, God bless you, sir. Thank you. It always amazes me the significance of things we see every day. And yet we don't really grasp their importance. You know, as so I was sitting there and I'm looking at the communion table, this do in remembrance of me. Memories. And I thought of memories. I was thinking about that because we're going to talk about this memorial. And memories are so powerful. Memories makes, memories make us. Memories take us to places that we remember with a smile. Memories also break us as we remember traumatic events in our lives. And I was just talking to our brother, uh, who is the assistant attorney for the county, and he, he told me about an experience with a witness that they didn't, they didn't want to make that person go through uh, a memory. And we've been here with my wife for almost five years. And we have made some memories. Some memories are joyous, like that, uh, that 2nd of December of 2019 when the doctor handed us our daughter, our Victoria, the one who was not supposed to be born and is, was born a true Texan right on Fanning Street in downtown Houston. There are other memories I don't care to remember, like the two nights we spent uh, three weeks ago without power, without heating, uh, with uh, only 30 degrees inside our home. And memories are powerful. I still remember growing up uh, as a little child, my Uncle Nahum, he used to listen. This is only for the older generation. He had the whole Ray Conniff collection, 1970s. And he would play those records all the time. And there was this song, Memories, that I, as a little child in Argentina, 40 years ago, I used to listen to. I still remember memories, like the colors of my mind. Uh, and and, 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 and memories are important. And because they are important, God left us something to remember. You see, this is why Jesus needed the incarnation. Because he needed to be like us. To feel like us. To know what it is to be like us. And because of that, he knew that in order to remember what he did for us, he needed to leave us something. And he left us this. He left us the Lord's Supper. And in order to do that, he made a memory. This was not just some accident. This was not some occurrence. He made this memory happen. You know, how many commercials we hear Oh, you know, where memories are made, you know, spend thousands of dollars in this vacation, you know. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and where memories are made. But Jesus made this memory happen. And he made it happen at a great cost. So we today can remember what he did. And he did this memory as he, was rem as he was celebrating another memory, another memorial that, the, that God left for the Jewish people for the ages. He gave us the Lord's Supper as he was celebrating Passover. So to this morning, 
as we go through a traditional Passover celebration, let's see if we can understand a little bit more about the profound significance of the Lord's Supper. So, so come with me to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter, chapter 20 sec, uh, 22. And let's see what happened that night. Let's see how this memory was made so we can have it today and we can remember what Jesus did for us. Verse 1. Chapter 22, Gospel of Luke. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread called the Passover was approaching, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Jump to verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asked, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs all furnished, made preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, and so they prepared the Passover. Passover is a seven-day feast, which is bound to happen in a few weeks. And during this time, we don't eat anything that contains leaven. That is why it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why no unleavened bread? Why no leaven? Well, throughout Scripture, we find that leaven is usually used as a symbol of sin. So during the Passover, we don't eat anything that contains leaven. No bread, no brownies, no cookies, no cakes. Nothing of that sort. No yeast. Nothing. So in order to celebrate Passover, first, we need to clean the house and we need to throw away anything that contains leaven. We cannot have anything that contains leaven. We cannot have anything that contains yeast because we can't have anything in the house. We can't have in the house anything that contains leaven. We can't have anything that represents sin. That's right. Once the house is cleansed, now we're ready to celebrate Passover. And everything begins with the lighting of the candle. This is the job of the lady of the house. So she comes over and she's going to light the Passover candle. Once she lights the candle, she's going to say the traditional prayer that goes like this. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidishanu benitzvotav neadlich ner shel pesach. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe. You have blessed us with your commandments and you have given us the commandment of lighting the Passover candle. It's very fitting that a woman lights these candles, for this reminds me that the Messiah, the light of the world, would not come from the seed of man, but from the seed of the woman and the will of God. Just as the prophet Isaiah foretold. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Now that the candles have been lit, uh, it is time to partake from the first cup. During the Passover, we drink from our cups four times. And each of these cups has a meaning. Has a, it's a symbol of something. The first cup is called the Kiddush cup, or the cup of sanctification. Then comes the second cup, the cup of plagues. Then comes the third cup. And this is the one that we want to pay special attention to. This is the cup of redemption. And it's the most important part of the whole ceremony. And then comes the fourth cup, the cup of praise. It is with the first cup, of course, that the Father will offer a special blessing that goes like this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pericha gafen. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. Amen. Once the, um, this cup has been, um, the, the, the father partakes from this cup, now comes the youngest child 
to ask the four traditional questions of Passover. These questions are in Hebrew, and they're designed to give us parents the opportunity to tell everybody about why we do what we do, why this is important, why something is worth celebrating. These questions are in Hebrew, they're chanted, and the first one goes like this. Baruch Hatah Donai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Ham Sorry. Baruch Hatah Donai Eloheinu Melech Haolam No, I'm saying the wrong prayer. Forgive me. Um Banishtana Halayla Haze Miko Halelot Which means why is this night different from all other nights? And we explain. This is what we do to remember what the Lord our God did for us when he took us out of the land of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. You see, the, me the, the message of Passover is freedom. It's liberation for we were prisoners of Pharaoh. I and mean, we couldn't leave Egypt. And so in our desperation, we cried out to God. And he sent a liberator, like I told the children. And that liberator was Moses. And he came to Pharaoh and said those famous words, let my people go. But Pharaoh would not let us go. So God had to send the plagues. Nine plagues God sent, and Pharaoh did not change his mind. So finally, God said, this is enough. I'm going to send a final and terrible plague. And so the Lord promised that he would send the angel of death to the land of Egypt. And one night, the angel of death would come, and kill every firstborn in every family in the land of Egypt. So that night, indeed, the angel of death came. But God in his mercy decided to spare our people. And so he told them that there was a way to be saved. He instructed them to take a, a lamb, a spotless lamb, a perfect lamb, sacrifice that lamb in the, on, in the altar, and then to apply the blood of those lambs on the doorposts of our home, first on the, on, the, on the upper post and then on the side post. And so when the angel of death came to the land of Egypt and he saw the blood of those lambs in, on our doorpost, the angel of death passed over the homes of the Jewish people. And so we get the name of the holiday, Passover. For we remember when the angel of death passed over the homes of the Jewish people because of the blood, the blood of of a lamb. But there's a greater message because just as my ancestors were saved, because they put the blood of those lambs on the doorposts of their homes, today we also are saved. We also receive salvation, but from a greater death, from eternal death, if we apply the blood of Messiah Jesus to the doorposts of our hearts. Amen? The boy, the girl, now they come and they ask, the second question, why is it that tonight we eat only unleavened bread? And we answered, our ancestors in the rush to leave the land of Egypt, they had to take the bread, but the dough had not risen yet. And so, in order to explain this, we have a very interesting thing. This, is, this element we have here is called the matzah tov. And uh, it's like a pouch, but this is an interesting thing. This is one pouch, but it has three compartments. One, two, and three. Inside each compartment, we have a piece of unleavened bread. So this is interesting. It's one pouch. It's one, but it's three. Or we could say it's three, but it's only one. So at this time, the father removes the middle piece of bread, that because we have a piece of bread inside each compartment, he recites a prayer and he breaks it in two. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit, the bread from the earth. Amen. So, he takes this bread, but this bread is not eaten now. As a matter of fact, this bread receives, it's very special. It is so special that it's going to receive a special name. The Afikomen, which means he who comes later. And this is exactly what happened. 
we don't need this bread now. Instead, we wrap it inside with a napkin and we hide it somewhere in the house. No one in the house knows what the afikomen is. And so it remains hidden. Now, interesting. The af afikomen means he who comes later. And we don't eat this, this bread now. It remains hidden, like buried. And no one can touch it until the end of the service. But at the end of the service, we'll have to bring it back or we won't be able to finish. The boy, the girl now come, uh, comes and asks the final two questions. Why is it that tonight we eat only bitter herbs? And the other one, why do we dip the bitter herbs in salty water? Well, as again, we're going to use a visual aid. So this is what we have. This is what we call, I'm sorry, the uh, the Passover plate. Okay, In this plate, you can see we have different compartments. And inside each compartment, we have something that we eat. You see, not only we remember by the things we hear, not only we remember by the things we see, but we also remember by the things we eat. And tell me if that isn't a powerful way to remember. Huh? I still can remember my grandmother's pizza, the best pizza in the world. I can still remember the roast that my mother used to make. I'm sure you have those memories too. Huh? That time that that barbecue maybe didn't go the way you want it. And you had guests in the ho at, at home. So, uh, But anyway, um, we remember by eating. And so we have different elements. The first one is called the uh, carpas or greens. And we usually use uh, parsley or lettuce. These greens represent life. And before we eat them, we dip them in salty water, which is a symbol of tears. And by doing this, we remember that life is a life of tears, and it certainly was for my people there in Egypt. The next element is called, I'm missing one. Oh, there it is, sorry. The next element, here it is, I put it here. The next element is quite disgusting. This is what we call um, maror. Maror is a fresh ground horseradish. And uh, right at this moment, this is something that we Jewish kids definitely remember. We need to take a piece of matzah, and we take a nice portion, and we're supposed to eat it. You know what happens when you do that? You end up crying and coughing, and, 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 and by your nostrils really clear you up, you know. Um, this horrible maror is very bitter, because it is supposed to remind us is supposed to remind us of the bitter life that the Jewish people had in the land of Egypt. So we eat this, and again, and we cry maybe a little bit, we suffer a little bit to remember the many tears and the suffering of the Jewish people in Egypt. The next element is quite different. This is what we call the haroset. The haroset is a mixture of an eye. This one, you need to come to try it at the end, okay? This one is chopped apples, uh, sugar, cinnamon, honey. Sometimes we put some raisins. And again, we need to take a piece of bread and we need to eat it. This one is delicious. However, something doesn't make sense. Um, look at the color. You see the brownish color? This color is supposed to remind us of the mortar that the Jewish people used to make bricks for Pharaoh. So many people say, wait, that doesn't make sense. How could it be that such a sweet mixture reminds us of such a bitter life? Well, the rabbis say, and for once they got it right, that even the bitterest life is sweetened with the promise of redemption. And here comes a question for all of us. Do you have the redemption that only Christ can give? Do you have that salvation? Has he brought that sweetness to your life? That is a question that I invo invite you to ponder as we, um, as we go into celebrating the Lord's Supper. So, 
The next element is what is called the hagiga. The hagiga is an egg that is um, is boiled in coffee, so it gets dark. And sometimes we put it over the flame, so it burns. Hagiga is a symbol of grief for the Jewish people because Hagiga was the name given to the offering that was brought to the temple at Passover time. Uh, but as you know, the temple was destroyed in the year 70 AD. So since then, we Jews have this egg that reminds us with sadness that we can no longer bring offerings to the temple in Jerusalem. There's one more element that no. It's, uh, it's not that it's invisible. And by the way, I'm not levitating anything there. Okay. Um, here we will have what is called the Zoroah. The Zoroah was the shank bone of a lamb. And it was a symbol of grief for the, it is a symbol of grief for the Jewish people. Why? Because it reminds us that also since the temple was destroyed, we have, we can't make any sacrifices in the temple. However, I don't have it here for a special reason. And that reason is that, yes, I'm Jewish, but I'm a believer in Jesus. And I believe in the words of John the Baptist when he said, Behold, the Lamb of God uh, who takes away the sin of the world. I don't need any lambs anymore because the Lamb of God came and died for me so I can have eternal life. Amen? Very good. Second cup, the cup of plagues. Um, this cup, and now we're going to do something a little bit strange. This cup is also a symbol of grief for the Jewish people. A full cup in a Jew at a Jewish table means uh, complete joy. But our joy is not complete. And so what we because we need to remember that, yes, um, we were liberated, but there was a lot of grief, a lot of sorrow, a lot of crying in the land of Egypt. So at this point, we empty 10 drops from uh, this, uh, the contents of this cup, to remember the many tears and the suffering of the Egyptians who lost so much because they defied the will of God. And there's a lesson for us here. We cannot be oblivious to the pain of the world. Even if everything is going well for us, we need to remember that other people suffering. And we need to show the love of our Messiah. So I hope that you will do that, and when others are suffering, you're there to provide a word of hope, a word of encouragement, and to tell them that there is someone that can bring joy to their heart. All right, so now will be the time for eating, but uh, we're not going to have any dinner here uh, today. But I want to use this time just to give you five minutes to tell a little bit of, a little bit of what we do in Hope for Israel. Hope for Israel is an Israeli ministry. We are an Israeli uh, ministry. Uh, our office is in the very city of Jerusalem, where I hope you will come to visit us someday. And um, from there, what we are is sharing the good news of Messiah with the whole world. We do it in special ways. We have a great ministry to, uh, to, uh, for young people. Young people in Israel are under a lot of pressure. Um, and so we're there proclaiming the good news. This is a country where you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know if, a missile, if Iran is going to fire a missile to you. You don't know if Iran is going to dump thousands of uh, gallons of, uh, of, of oil in your coastline because they can't do anything else. You don't know if a terrorist is going to come around your back <coughs> and, st and, and stab you with a knife. So young people need our ministry. And so we're ministering. We have a, a great youth group there. And um, we are ministering to them before they go to the army, when they go to the army, and after they go to the army. And we particularly have a great ministry to people who are in the army. The Israeli army is a very difficult place to be. You're under constant pressure. You're under constant danger. So we're ministering to them, sharing the good news of Messiah. And we have a special outreach every Passover in a few weeks that you can partake of. Every Passover, we have a food distribution program, a food distribution campaign. And so we go to Jewish people, we go to Druze people, we go to Arabs, and we share lechem, bread, food, in the name of the, of the bread of God, who is the Messiah. And you ha can help us. 
Pastor Billy mentioned that you have an opportunity to give to our ministry. And whatever you give today will be sent to Israel to buy food and provide food for people who are in great need. COVID-19 has been tough for all of us. But the lockdowns in Israel have been even worse. Uh, in Israel, you couldn't, walk, uh, you couldn't walk 500 yards away from your home. So people have been confined to their homes, and there is a great need. So let me tell you something. We don't need your money. We need your support. So if the Lord leads you, you can give in several ways. You can write a, a check to the church and put in the Hope for Israel envelope. You can write a check to Hope for Israel uh, you can, and you can also come to see me at the end if you want to give with a credit card. There's, there are some cards there. Uh, you can either give me your credit card or you can write your credit card information, and that will enable us to, uh, to get your uh, support. You can also go to our website, as Pastor Billy uh, mentioned. And uh, let me just say something. I, I don't mean to be pushy or anything, but if you would consider... Uh, signing up for our newsletter, which we don't send actually newsletters. We send emails every week, every Friday. We send you a, por a, a message from Jerusalem with the weekly portion that people will be reading in synagogues worldwide. Uh, if, if you could give us your email, that's all we need. We would love to send it to you. But also, if the Lord leads you, and in the cards you can do that, if you would consider uh, giving every month 10 15, 20, 25 dollars or whatever the Lord uh, leads you to do to give. That would be a tremendous help for all of us. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you very much in advance and I hope that you will pray and support us. Very well. We finally come to the most important time of the service. It is the time for the third cup. The cup of redemption. But the service can continue because something is missing. Something that at the very beginning was broken, was buried, and now we need to bring it back. That is the Afikom. So all the children get up and start searching around the home. And finally, one of them will find the Afikom. When he finds it, or she finds it, he, will bring it, he or she will bring it back to the father, who will now break it down in small pieces. Each person at the table receives a piece like this. And this piece of bread will be taken along with the third cup, the cup of redemption. Now, does this look familiar? It is supposed to be, for this is the root of the Lord's Supper. This is the origin of the Lord's Supper. Think about this. Where else can we find a clear image of Jesus as the Afikomen, which is without leaven? The symbol of a nature without sin. And so that is why Jesus gave us this memorial as he was celebrating Passover. Think, think about this. Think about the matzah toy, as I mentioned. It's three, but it's only one. Why? The rabbis don't know. They have wondered. Why three in one? Well, some say, well, maybe it's the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But why is the middle matzah broken, buried, and then brought back? Others say, well, it probably reminds us of the three, uh, the three pillars of modern Judaism. The law, uh, uh, prayer, the law, and uh, the commandments. But why is the middle matzah broken, buried, and then brought back? And finally, say, well, maybe it reminds us of the ancient order of worship in the uh, kingdom of Israel. The priests, the Levites, and uh, the priests, the Levites, and the, uh, and the king. But why is the middle matzah broken, buried, and then brought back? Nobody knows. But the question is, why do we keep looking for answers? Why don't we accept the answer that we find in the very design of the matzah? Because you see, in it, we have three parts, but they are one. A word which in Hebrew means one is the word echad. And this word was used by God when speaking to the Jewish people. He said, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But the word used here to say one is the word echad, which actually means unity. And it's during Passover that the Father 
removes the middle piece of unleavened bread. And I think, brothers and sisters, this clearly speaks of the unity of one God revealed in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And why? So again, why is the middle matzah broken, buried, and then brought back? Very simple. Because Jesus was broken in his death, buried, and then brought back to life. And knowing that that would happen, Jesus took that night this afikomen, this bread, and said, this is my body, which is broken for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, let me call Brother Billy to come forward, and we all go into receive and partake from this memory, this memorial, the bread which reminds us of the body of our Lord. If you would then, in the middle aisle and over here, there are the elements. Be sure to take a glass that has the bread in it and one that has the juice in it. Go ahead and do that now. Gather your elements, please. a cup with the bread in it and one with the grape juice in it. And as Brother Bill is telling the story, I can't help but think on that Last Supper as Jesus broke the, the bread. I can imagine, Brother Bill, that the disciples were saying, okay, I don't understand this, but we do it. And then after Jesus has risen from the dead, I can imagine the disciples sitting around and that's what he meant. That's what he meant when he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat. So, the disciples are already bewildered because Jesus just took a great departure they thought they were just celebrating Passover. The usual, you know, the same, the same old and old. So the disciples are already amazed. And I imagine, you know, they're amazed, they're shocked. And then Jesus takes the third cup, the cup of redemption. Until today, it's called the cup of redemption. Okay? And so, again, disciples shocked. And Jesus says, not the usual, but he says, this is my blood, which is shed for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, brothers and sisters, again, let us partake of this memorial and remember that he shed his blood for all of us so we can have eternal life. And think about the same night in which he was betrayed. Just let that hang there for a minute. The same night in which he was betrayed. And he could have given it up and just said, this is too much. But he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do in remembrance of me. And because 
we have partaken from this cup, we can partake from the final one, the cup of praise, the cup of Hallel. Now, Jesus said something that Pastor Billy pointed out so clearly. He s when he took the, the third cup, he said, uh, we, I will not partake from this cup again until the kingdom. That's something that Pastor Bill and I have been talking a lot. Uh, that's a subject for a class. And how wonderful that is. But the kingdom will be an opportunity of joy. Of the kingdom. I hope you know what you're saying when you pray the Lord's Prayer and you say, Thy kingdom come. What you're asking for is something amazing. And there won't be no sorrow. No joy, no, no sorrow, no pain, no suffering. But until then, we can experience the joy that only He brings to our life. I want to stop here for a moment because I want to ask you do you have a reason to praise God today? Do you? Um, many of us have painful memories. We're talking about memories. Memories that we avoid. Memories that have shaped us. Memories that, as a result of that memory, there are things we don't do. Places we don't go. People we do not want to see. My mother, right before she died, she she lost, my mother did not recognize anything. And I will never forget a ride on an ambulance to the hospice where she was spent her last days. She woke up bewildered and she said, where am I? And she said, mom, we're taking you to a hospital, don't worry. And what happened next, I will never forget. She looked at me, her only son, and she said, and who are you? God. I will not forget that. Just as I will never forget when that doctor handed me my daughter, the one that we had been told for years we could never have. So friends, forgive me, I'm a Latin. Um, what are your memories like? What do you have to remember? Is it all grief and pain? Or is it grief and pain that Jesus has come to alleviate in your life. He came to give us joy. So my question to you is, could you drink from this cup today? Could you? Would you? That's the next question. If you say I can't, then let me ask you, would you? I don't know where you are, Maybe you don't know Jesus. You don't have Jesus in your life. And you don't know what we're talking about. Let me invite you today to, to come to him. To inv invite him to come into your life. And if you are a believer, and you know the kind of memory I'm telling you about, he can bring joy can alleviate that pain. He can lift that darkness just like he did at the very beginning of creation. The first thing he did, he separated the choshech, the darkness, from the ore, from the light. So if you are there, if you have that memory that hurts you, let Jesus take it away. Let Jesus take it away. And please 
drink, drink from me, with me, from the cup of grace. Father, we thank you because you came to take away our tears. You came away to give us joy. You came to take away what hurts us, what ails us, what makes us suffer. And Lord, if there's someone here who doesn't know that joy, I pray that he or she will invite you to come to their life. And Lord, if there is a believer like me with those painful memories and I pray, Lord, that you will make that person feel your presence in a special way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you have enabled us to drink from this cup. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen. So for the last time, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei perih agafen, Blessed are thou, O Lord, are the God, our Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. May God bless you. And, and uh, thank you for receiving me this morning. Amen. <laughs> Prayerfully consider giving to a Hope for Israel. And again, all kinds of ways to do that. Brother Bill, bring one of those up here and let's talk about that. On the screen, you will see. Can tell I, us, tell I, us what that thing I'm is. I'm the first one to be excited about. <laughs> Memories. Memories. One of the best things about Passover is the food. And one of the best things is the matzo toffee dessert. Let me tell you what this is. This is matzo covered with chocolate and walnuts and with some kosher salt. It is one of the most, del I can eat this whole bag by myself. <laughs> so this church is so friendly, so good, that have made it possible for you to take this home or to, or to enjoy it right here. Why not? So please take this, take it home, so we, you will know what we Jewish kids experience at the end of every Passover dinner, okay? So we have uh, one for everybody. So uh, as you're leaving, be sure to grab one of those. And uh, we're going to say our benediction at this time. For the benediction for March, we find in the book of Ephesians. And I broke it down into each line. So if you would say with me, Now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And then we're going to dismiss with our doxology. We haven't sung that in a long time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and then you are dismissed. And if you share the belief in Jesus Christ, the Savior that we have had explained to us today, sing this with all your heart. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Bless.